Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Painting in Colour. Um, this video is going to be a time lapse of a painting. Before I jump into it, however, quickly want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you guys are already familiar with what Skillshare is and what they offer, you can go straight in the description. There's a link there so you can use it to get two months of premium membership for free. And if you're not familiar with Skillshare yet, I'll be talking about them a little bit more in depth later on in this video. Just so you're aware, Skillshare has booked me for four sponsored videos. They tend to book me in batches of like three to four videos. They don't just sponsor one video. So I'll have one sponsored video a month until February. So including this one, I'll also have a sponsored video in December, in January and in February. Just a heads up so that you know what to expect in the next few weeks. I just put very hot tea on my hand and this video is off to a good start. That's what I get for sitting on a stool where I don't reach the floor. Um, also very, very creaky. Oh my god! So those of you who've watched my Inktober vlog will already be familiar with some of the footage in this video because I showed myself starting the painting in that vlog. I decided to include that footage in this video also just so that you have a whole video with the whole painting process for this particular painting instead of just the end of it. This painting I've had in the works at least as an idea for a little while. Those of you who've seen my September vlog will remember the sketch I did then of the piece and I finally got round to painting it while I was also doing Inktober. It was nice to kind of be able to go to painting a little bit while I was working with ink. Um, I, I it kind of switched things up and kept my mind fresh and kept my motivation going so it was a bit tricky to fit it in while I was really busy with Inktober but I think it was also really beneficial. It's quite a classic composition for me. I have a dark background with a, a character on it with something happening to their body. <laughs> it's a pretty classic me piece but I needed something that wasn't too overwhelming, something that I didn't have too much detail in it because obviously I was very busy with other things at the same time so it was a really nice piece to kind of work with every so often and kind of jump in and out of. I used mostly gouache and watercolour in this piece. The inside of the head is painted with acryl gouache. I used Turner's brand. It's gouache that basically doesn't reactivate once it's dry, a little bit like acrylics. If you're interested in knowing more about this piece, I'll have a detailed process video of it on my Patreon at some point. This piece was also uh, the reward for my $20 patrons on Patreon for September. I'm quite happy with this piece, although it may not look like it, but it was quite a challenge because I'm not actually that comfortable with painting skin tones. And when it's a piece like this, where there aren't a lot of detail to distract from anything that's gone wrong, um, it's easier, to, at least for me, probably for you too, but it's easier to see what's wrong and to see what could have been done better and stuff like that. So. Simpler compositions are, are easier to work on because obviously there is less to paint but at the same time you need to paint what you have to paint properly because it's going to be drawing all the attention from the viewer so it was a tricky one. I've realised that the way I work on my bigger paintings, like smaller paintings is fine, I absolutely love using watercolour and gouache for smaller paintings that are quicker and I don't need as many layers but for my bigger concepts I I find that I have a tendency to overwork things. I don't have a piece fully figured out in my head before I start painting it. Sometimes I work on colour comps, um, which are like small versions of the painting with different colour options. Sometimes I work on a value drawing where I just sketch everything in black and white. But it's fairly rare, I'm quite impulsive and so I'll usually jump into a painting without having all the details figured out. <laughs> which is good in some ways, it means that the pieces are probably more um, um, more spontaneous in some manner, they kind of have a genuine look to them if you jump into them without overthinking them too much. And at the same time, it means that whilst I'm working, I'll be revising things a lot, changing my mind, going back and forth, erasing things, repainting over, that kind of thing. Which is fine, I think, it's just, you know, how some people work and some don't, you know, some people are more organised than me <laughs> in the way they paint. It's just, you know, a different technique. The problem is I think it might not fit the medium I'm using to paint. Gouache isn't the best medium when you work on something over and over again, because gouache, traditional gouache at least, reactivates once it's dry, so you can get away with layering quite a bit with gouache but there comes a certain point where 
things will start muddying up and you need to know when to stop and stop reworking a layer and um, it's definitely something that is tricky that I know of that I try to avoid but I manage to avoid that a lot better when I'm working on smaller pieces whereas when I'm working on bigger pieces that I like to spend a few days on even a few weeks sometimes re reworking elements over and over again isn't great and means that a lot of the time I end up muddying my piece or and sometimes I go past the point of no, no return with the gouache and I need to stop tinkering with it altogether even if it's at a point where I don't like it and so I think maybe the way I'm working on my bigger paintings doesn't fit the medium I'm using so I've bought myself some acrylics soft body acrylics by liquid x and I'm going to try those, see if that works better for bigger pieces. Gouache and watercolour are my first love. They're the things that I love the most. They are my... my babies. <laughs> like, I just... they're the thing I enjoy using the most partially because I'm very impatient and I'm... I mean, the reason I don't use oils is a lot of valid reasons but one of them that comes to mind first is the fact that I do not have the patience to wait for that painting to dry. <laughs> I just don't. I need something to be done and then move on to something else. Acrylic might be the answer. I haven't used acrylic in like 10 years. I did one painting earlier this year with acrylic inks <laughs> but it doesn't really count as paint though. I don't really count inks as paint. Um, they kind of count more as like inks. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I, I'm gonna try acrylics, see if that works better for bigger pieces that I like tinkering with more. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. I'll probably do a video about me using the acrylics again for the first time. We'll see. If you have any advice on using Liquitex um, professional acrylics, I'd love to hear it. It's always lovely to have some input. But um, yeah, expect a little bit of acrylic work in the future, just so I can figure out what mediums I think would work best for my technique of working when I work on big paintings. I'm still going to use gouache and watercolour, but I might add some acrylic to the mix, we'll see. So anyway, back to the painting. I kept the background fairly dark and um, uncomplicated, and initially I was wondering if I would add anything to the background, it felt like it was just a bit too flat. Um, I asked my boyfriend and he said it kind of reminded him of like Renaissance portraits where the back is really dark and there's like a soft diffused lighting on the character. And that was a pretty convenient answer for me. <laughs> it meant that I, I kind of could give myself an excuse not to put anything in the background, which, you know, might have just been the, the easy way out. But it's also a valid point and I like it and I think it probably works better given that the composition relies on the inside of the head being really detailed and bright and coloured and nothing else around it being so. So it kind of also works out that way quite well. Lately, I have realised that a few of my paintings have been including really bright colours, which is not something that I used to be drawn to, but I've realised I'm more and more drawn to now. Um, I'm still really interested in muted colours also, they're just what I get more excited about when I decide to paint something. So I realised that my last few paintings have been exploring that kind of contrast between having muted colours and really bright colours. And I, I suspect that probably will be a tendency I'll be exploring further in future paintings. But I thought it was really interesting to see this particular painting because it perfectly illustrates that kind of contrast I've been playing with. And, uh, and I didn't consciously make that decision before and I just enjoyed it while I was painting it and then looked at the painting and realised that tendency I had been leaning towards lately. I love seeing things evolving in my style even when I'm not conscious of them. I find that really interesting. I find that the tendencies that I lean towards uh, change without me controlling them. And that's often how style goes. So this painting has been really interesting to work on. It was an enjoyable process and it showed me a direction that I seem to be going into for my future style. And I always find that very interesting. Someone on Instagram when I shared the painting commented that the the um, the painting inside the head resembled batik. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but when I researched it, it um, refers to a specific kind of motif in Indonesian culture. I didn't have any specific reference when it came to actually copying the designs from anything. It was just all in my head. But it most definitely resembles it. I can definitely, definitely see it, particularly like the outline 
of the motif in the head definitely kind of gives off that batik vibe. It's completely unconscious. But I love that the community helped me learn a lot more about kind of what my mind was unconsciously drawing inspiration from. And here's the finished painting. I like this one. I think it's probably one of my most peaceful paintings and it definitely gives me a calm feeling looking at it and I really enjoyed painting it. So before I end this video, I quickly wanted to talk about Skillshare, especially for those of you who might not be aware of what the service is. I'm sure most of you are. They have been supporters of my channel in the past, but if you are not familiar with them, they are an online learning platform. They have like, thousands of videos on like lots of different topics. I'm personally most familiar with their freelance entrepreneurial content that helps you run a business and that kind of thing. And also obviously their illustration and fine art videos. If you want a course that I personally really enjoyed, you can check out the Color Masterclass by Victor Munai. I'm probably not pronouncing this right. I'm really sorry if I if I'm butchering it. She's an illustrator from Hong Kong. Her course is really, really good. There's tons of really good information in it. And I've been watching a lot of color classes because color is just one of those things I don't really have an instinct for. And so I'm trying to kind of build that base of knowledge up a little bit. So I've been watching quite a lot of color themed classes and hers was one that I, like time flew by. She was such a good teacher. She's really, I don't know, she's really sweet and really knowledgeable and all the info she shared was really, really useful. And uh, yeah, I can definitely wholeheartedly recommend that course. It's really good. Skillshare works on a subscription basis, so you don't pay per course, you pay per month. If you get an annual membership, I believe it's about $10 a month and you get access to absolutely all the videos on the platform. If you're interested in checking their service out, there's a code in the description below that gives you two months of premium membership for free, so you don't even have to commit to anything yet. You can just check them out, see if it's your thing, and then make a decision based on that. If you want some video recommendations, I have a few links in the description below. Um, I have a few of my art friends that are teaching on there, and I personally would quite like to teach on there too. I've been preparing courses <laughs> for about a year now. <laughs> and I do, I, I really mean it, I really want to upload courses on there, but uh, finding the time among all the other things I do is proving a bit hard <laughs> but I am I'm definitely I'm halfway through a course on drawing hands and um, I'm doing another course on um, transparency I think and stuff like that so you know I can't guarantee that I'll be uploading anytime soon but I do plan on having some courses on there at some point but anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the painting. Prints are available on my shop if you're interested in getting one of them. I am um, going to be receiving the booklets and the calendars very soon, probably in the next 10 days or so. And I'll be sending everything out as soon as I receive everything. I am planning on having everything sent before the middle of December. Hopefully in time for everyone to receive stuff in time for the holidays. I can't completely guarantee that because a lot of it depends on postal services, which is completely out of my hands. But as far as what I can control, I'll be trying my best to send everything out before the cutoff line that my post office gave me for things to arrive before the holidays. So that's my plan. I'll keep you updated, but it's all going on and hopefully I'll be able to send every, everything out very, very soon. I know the last few weeks of my videos have been heavy on like uh, promotional announcements and product announcements and that kind of thing. The end of the year is always my busiest time. It's always the time I, I have the most happening business-wise. So that's why there was so many announcements back to back. Thank you sounds like an overused word. <laughs> I say it a lot and it's just... I really mean it. It's uh, it's amazing that you guys are really so supportive and I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for how much you help and even if it's just with a comment and even if it's just by watching this video, it's a tremendous help. It's, it's also just a boost of confidence and it makes me feel really happy that my work is out there and being enjoyed by you guys and that you enjoy it enough to have a piece of it for yourself if you decide to do that, to, to support me that way. It's, it's kind of unbelievable, even though it's been like two or three years now that this has been happening and I still can't quite believe it. And it's, uh, it's amazing and thank you very, very, very much for all your support. I really, truly, deeply, deeply appreciate it. So, um, yeah, 
on this note, I hope that you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoyed the painting, I hope that you are all well, I hope you're taking really good care of yourselves, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. See you soon. Bye guys.